Oscar Pistorius. Now, the prosecutor, Jerry Nell, continued to try to poke holes into the Olympian's account of the night he killed his girlfriend, Revis Jean Camp. Now, Nell is trying to call the defendant's character and credibility into question. Now, he has repeatedly accused Pistorius of changing his version of events and of lying to the court. With the utmost respect, uh, Mr. Pistorius, this is now the biggest indication of you tailoring evidence. You cannot have made that mistake. It's impossible to do. May Mr. Nell please read the context in which uh, I'm I said reading that. nothing. I'm asking you why did you make the mistake, sir? I didn't make the mistake, my lady. You cannot explain the mistake in the way that you're doing. You're tailoring your evidence. Robin Kerno is following the trial from South Africa. She joins me live from outside the court in Pretoria. And Robin, it was another day of relentless cross-examination. Tell us more about how the prosecutor has been trying to undermine the credibility of Oscar Pistorius. Well, absolutely. He baited, he goaded Oscar Pistorius all morning. And this isn't just about proving Oscar Pistorius's version of events is implausible. Uh, Harry Nell is trying to put across that his version of events is not even possible. Now throughout the morning there was this focus on whether or not Oscar Pistorius was contradicting himself, whether or not he was making mistakes. He did concede that, as you heard, so much so that it has brought it to attention of the judge. Take a listen to how she reacted. If you tired me one time, we will discuss it with your legal team. My lady, it's not that I want time. It's that I'm tired. I'm going to be tired. I don't need time. I am tired. It's not going to change. Okay, well, later on, after that uh, discussion, that conversation, the judge said, listen, if you're tired, and you, why are you making so many mistakes if you're tired? essentially you need to rest can you handle this because remember this is his legal responsibility it's his legal right to tell his side of the excuse me to tell his side of the story so the judge was making sure that he can't be tired he can't be over emotional as we've seen because he has to put on the record his side of the story and he has to be sure about it and she has to know that Robin, a key question that was raised earlier today in the courtroom there was about Oscar Pistorius's <coughs> decision to, to go toward the danger. How did Pistorius explain that moment, his decision to go to the door and to fire the shots? Well, that is, of course, also such a focus, such a key question for the state because Oscar Pistorius has consistently said all along that he felt scared. He didn't have his prosthetic legs on. He was fearful of an intruder in the night. So the, the state essentially saying, well, if you were so fearful, if you were so scared, if you really wanted to protect Reva Sienkamp, why didn't you just leave by the bedroom door? Why did you go forward on your stumps? Why did you approach the danger? And Oscar Pistorius replying, well, that's me, Oscar. I want to confront them. I want to stand up, up, up for them. Now, this also, remember, goes back to a key point made during some of his earlier testimony when he described how his mother brought him up, saying that when he was a school child, when he was bullied for having no legs, his mother sent him back to school saying, you've got to deal with it, you fight your own battles, you're on your own. So that response very much plays into the larger context of how Oscar Pistorius and his defense team are trying to prove that he deals with, with, with danger. Um, the court um, looked into the issue of his credibility. I want to ask you about Pistorius's yes. sincerity because that has really been examined all this last week. There are questions out there about whether he is acting or saying rehearsed lines. When you're in the courtroom and you're listening and you're watching Oscar Pistorius, how do you gauge his sincerity in court? Well, you know, frankly, I don't think it's my opinion that matters. I mean, it doesn't matter what, what anybody thinks except the judge. I mean, she has to assess just whether she thinks he is being genuine, whether he's being authentic, whether his version of events is being conducted in, in a proper way, you know. And I think, really, it is so important that she believes him. Um, so there isn't a jury system here. There isn't this emotional response a layperson like you or me or many of our viewers sitting there watching are casting judgment on the way we think he's reacting. I mean, really, when it boils down to it, the, the judicial system, the law here in South Africa is all about the facts. 
It's about how the judge interprets the law and, of course, whether the judge assesses he's credible. Now, these questions about whether or not she screamed, uh, Reva Sienkamp screamed after the first shot, how Oscar Pistorius responds to those questions under pressure, all very important in how the judge assesses him. In terms of how I've felt and, 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 and watched him in court, he's stressed, he's clearly remorseful, he was clenching his teeth very, very hard today, his jaw, uh, he really looked like he was struggling. Whether or not that's an indication of his guilt or innocence, we, you know, we, we, we just can't, uh, can't make our own judgments on that, can we? Of course, of course. Uh, Robin Kerner reporting live from Pretoria. Again, court adjourned until Monday. The trial will continue then. Thank you, Robin.